This is wow. Good. Thanks for coming out. I didn't know. I never been in Hawaii. I didn't know if uh, if anybody would show up, but uh, <laughs> a couple people show up. We had a long flight in. I always am grateful to land because they always talk about all the shit that can happen to you while you're in the unlikely event of a water landing. The un that's the word they use. In the unlikely event of loss of pressure, I'm always in the plane going. You know, it's that unlikely. Hardly seems worth bringing it up and scaring the shit out of everyone on the plane. <laughs> because it's not going to happen. You may as well just be cruel. Hi, this is the captain. In the unlikely event that I should run bare ass through the main compartment, <laughs> wearing a World War I Kaiser helmet, singing clang, 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 went the trolley, the drinks are on me. <laughs> if you just want to be nasty, you know, just make shit up. Hi, as a captain. You know, in the unlikely event that I'm not really an airline pilot, but a psycho who has the real captain tied to a barca lounger in my basement, I'll be pointing the plane toward the ground at a 90 degree angle. In the unlikely event you should survive impact and need to eat your fellow passengers for sustenance, may I suggest the fat guy in 17F with a nice Chardonnay. In the unlikely event of a real emergency, James Earl Jones will be on the plane saying, Mother of God. That's a rule, I think, in any tragedy. James Earl Jones has to say, Mother of God. Never really comes up in your life, does it? Nothing that dramatic happens that you have occasion to say that. We're out of Diet Coke. How about Diet Pepsi? Mother of God. Just never happens to me. <laughs> Came in from uh, L.A. That's where I live. Anybody there from L.A.? Yeah? Sucks, doesn't it? Moving from New York for less stress. <laughs> that was like moving to Alabama for the theater. What a huge error. What a big mistake on my part. Carjacking capital of the country. I'm at the point I'm driving with the club on. Can only go straight, but safety first. And I bought the worst car you could possibly have. I bought a Corvette. Anybody have this car? I didn't even want it. It's just weird. If you're a guy and you go to buy a car, there's like two sides of your head to get in a fight. There's one side going, why don't you get a Hyundai? They're inexpensive and they'll go any place any car will. And then you have the more primitive, hairy, teenage side of your brain going, Hyundai? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> Let's get a sports car. There's a good chance we'll be killed in a fiery accident. You know what I'm saying? Besides, the only way we get a girl home with a Hyundai is when you run over her and her hair gets caught in a bumper. So I go down to the car dealership, and I should tell you, I don't know if any of you guys like this. I'm one of these people that's like, I have no sales resistance. People can sell me any kind of shit. I'm just like, what was that, eye contact? Take all my money. <laughs> he likes me, that man. <laughs> and I walk in there, and I know I'm like, so I'm walking in, bah, bah, you know. And the guy that sold me my car, I know I'm in trouble, right, because he has a sign on his office wall says he is the best salesman in his region. So what does that really tell you? Of all the fucking liars they have, he's the best. He is the Beethoven of bullshit. The sultan of the swindle. A guy who could talk a rabbi into a plate of ribs, that's my guy. So I'm walking in, bah, bah. And there's the guy, you know, and he looks, you know, he's got a, like a $60 haircut and a nice white shirt starched and, and a tail. He actually had a, a little tail. He'd been like lying so long he had sprouted a little satanic rodent tail. He was trying to hide it, but every time he turned around you could see he had this little fucking tail. And his whole office smelled like cheese. And he had like that real trustworthy look of, hey. How are you? Welcome to Bend Over Chevrolet. Come on in. Help yourself to some cheese. Have a seat here in this chair while I refuse to tell you the price of the car for the next 46 hours in a row. That's the problem with buying a car. He won't tell you how much the fucker is. I go, how much is it? I don't know. It's about 20 grand. I'll take it. Great. That'll be 41.5. Follow me. I go, what happened to the 20? 20, 40. What's the difference? How about some Swiss? Come on in here. I go, look, just tell me how much the car is. Not yet. I'm going to do something I don't usually do because I like you. 
Let me show you this secret list of car prices that I'm not allowed to show to anybody, that I show to every person that walks in. Now, as you can see, I'm not making a profit. Well, then why sell the car? That's the kind of guy I am. I don't care about profit. I only care about you. How about some Parmesan? So I go, look, this is getting old. Just tell me how much the fucker is. Not yet. Follow me. We're going to play a game we play here at the car dealership. Write down what you want to spend for it on that piece of paper. Then I'll write down my price on that piece of paper. Then we'll skip in the circle until the music stops. And if you land in this chair with a duck on it, you can have the car. How about some craft singles? So I go, look. I go, look, Ben. Just sell me the fucking car. Right? And after two hours, it turns out you've been talking to the wrong guy. I go, That's the next remark. It's not up to me. Who's it up to? The guy in the back. Who is it? We don't know. I've never seen him. He's sort of the Wizard of Oz of the car dealership, that guy.